Hello, this is my 1990 RC30. Uh, I've had this about six years, bought it off the local Honda dealer. He had it on his wall for about five years. I managed to prize it off him when he was a bit skint one Christmas. So anyway, uh, it's pretty much stock. It's, well, it is stock. It's done 7,941.7 miles, about 70 of which were done yesterday. I think when I got it, it got about 5,000 miles on it. Um, I haven't done a lot to this bike really. Uh, the only thing I did was last year I got it dynoed. It ran out at 90 horsepower and we adjusted the jet and we leaned it off. They're 112, 110 back and front carbs and we put it to 102, 100 and removed the shims from the needles and it got rid of the huge flat spot that it had in the middle about sort of real resonant about seven and a half thousand rpm got rid of that it, it feels like it's running a bit lean but it's a lot better than it was and the dyno round got to 100 horsepower so 100 horsepower out of a stock rc30 ain't bad um when i got it it had michelin met sorry metzler me1 tires on it um I, I chewed through the back pretty quick uh the front's still on it and what i did was i replaced the back with a dunlop I think it's a Sportsmax, Sportsmax Radial D207. I think this is the same tyre they put on the V-Rod and it's not quite the right size. This is 180, 55, 18 and I think the stock might have been 170, 60 or 170, 55, something like that. You know, obviously you can buy off-the-market wheels for them and you can change the, 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 the rear from an 18 to a 17 um, and you can use the ride height adjuster, but I couldn't be asked to do any of that. I just got a tyre and put it on it. I have to say it's not a very good tyre. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't grip that well. Um, so anyway, I'd say uh, completely stock. Uh, when I got it, the gearing had been changed radically. The 1640 stock gearing, and it was something like 1544 or something like that. So it rev a lot harder, um, you know. But it probably ran to do about 125, 130 redlining in top. But what's funny is that because the gear, um, the speedo's driven off the off the the, the gear shaft, the counter sprocket shaft. So the, the, you know if you if you down gear it, the speedo uh, kind of takes that into effect. So you could get this thing to where it was saying like 165, but it obviously wasn't. Uh, and I guess it'll do about 140, 145. We are at 5,000 feet here in Colorado, so uh, that does have a little bit of an effect. Gave it a full service last year. Had to shim two of the exhaust valves on the back. Um, removed the emissions stuff for what for what little or no effect that has. Um, and I say this is one of the one of the 300 that was imported in 1990. I've been looking for a pipe for it because you can get a lot more out of them with a pipe, but I, I haven't really been successful. They have this funny kind of the the pipe is a big single piece that goes down to the four down pipes, and I've I've, I've struggled to find a reasonably priced solution for that because I don't want to spend two grand on the on the exhaust systems that are out there. Um, can't get very many parts for these anymore, although some stuff is still available. There's some guy on eBay been selling mirrors for about two years. And to my knowledge, you can still buy them new for the Honda dealer. Well, you could about six months ago because I, I bought a pair for this. Um, interesting also, everybody, when I, when I got the bike, I got a spare bottom cowling and a spare tailpiece brand new in the box. I sold them to a guy in California about four years ago for 1500 bucks each and um, which is a pretty good deal for both of us really since I got them with with the bike and uh, I bought about seven top the, the last seven top fairings from Honda everybody always tell you that they they you know you couldn't buy them and I bought seven of them from the local Honda dealer and sold them all on eBay um, but then they did disappear so bodywork OEM bodywork is pretty hard to find um, I know you can't get headlights in fact you can't get most stuff really you can get some odds and ends but what's really you know, if you're going to buy, if you're thinking of buying one or restoring one, if you find a rough one, things like these, these trims here that go inside the fairing, they're impossible to find and you can't get them new. And, and I tell you now that if you have an RC30 or you want an RC30, buy one like this because if, if you buy one that either needs some work or you think you're going to restore one or build one, it's just going to cost you a whole pile of money. Um, I've had three people try and buy this off me. Uh, and none of them have really offered me enough money. I had one guy at a bike shop was like, "You tell me what you want, and I'll write you a check now, buddy." So I threw out a big fat number, and of course he didn't. He didn't do it. Um, it's great to ride. It's very low down. It, you know, it handles fantastically. You just have to kind of think about going around a corner and uh, put a bit of pressure on the foot peg, and it just drops in. Front's very solid. Like I say, rear's not as good as it was with the Metzler tire. I think uh, I like it. I could change that, but I just I just can't be can't be asked. Um, Brakes are reasonable. The tiny bit of flutter from the from the front from front rotors. These can warp quite easily. And one of the fork seals actually has blown, um, so I, I need to I need to replace that. But it, it, it's nice. It's got a little rubber doodad missing. I've actually got it, but it it just corroded over time. 
from there. And last year I gave it a full service. I'd you know change the plugs, say change the oil, change the filter, change the uh, you know shimmed it, uh, change the uh, the coolant. I did. I went through it top to top, changed all the brake fluid, put rear brake pads in the back because the rear brake was shit and it still is shit. Um, I stripped and cleaned the caliper and put a new seal in it, and that didn't seem to make any difference. And I used OEM brake pads, so maybe that was the maybe that was the issue. So it still has the reflectors on the back and the OEM fiberglass bodywork, which is incredibly light, incredibly flexible, and incredibly expensive. Um, so you know, nice ones that these show up on eBay anywhere from like you know. 15 to 30 thousand dollars depending on how many miles it's got and there's there's uh, there's been a couple out there that've got a couple of hundred miles on them which if you want to buy one of these and stick it in the garage you can do but i get it out, out every so often and ride it like I say i rode it to work yesterday and some guy stopped me and said is that a real one and i was like well yeah <laughs> um what else that's it really like i say I, I i don't think i'll ever sell this somebody left to offer me a lot of cash to get rid of this because i like it um he's got a very cramped riding position you're very very much over the over the front wheel which is kind of uh, you know you don't want to go great distances on it obviously and it only has one seat um, but it, it, it's just a it's just a lovely bike to ride and a, and a lovely thing to have it's the nearest thing you can get to motorcycle art I think and some people might say it's the, one of the greatest bikes of all time and I'd probably be inclined to agree with them one fault um, the, the left hand headlight has got a Hang on, left hand as you look at it has got a, a got a big chip in it um and i've struggled to find a headlight as well but i haven't really looked that hard they are out there so that's it really like i say it's it's a lovely bike it's uh and i'm very lucky to have one i always wanted one since i was a kid and i've got all the shit that goes with it i've got all the paperwork got the original manual and the toolkit and the original stand and loads of leaflets and stuff like that and a, a, a yoshi muir a tuning book or something like that i, I don't know um, it's all in a box that I never never get out but that's it um, I say it's, it's just lovely and I, I, I have to ensure this fully comprehensive obviously because if you fall off this thing or somebody runs into you it's probably going to be not impossible to rebuild but if you if you screw up the bodywork it's it's going to be difficult to find replacements if it ever got damaged beyond repair so like I say there are some parts available but they're kind of drying up and that's it really I'll just uh, you know you know, I think it's a super light, super fast and super flickable, but hey, what do I know? Because I ride a fucking Z1300 every day, so, you know, uh, which is actually just lurking in here. Um, which is a nice bike in its own merit. And then the Dakar has got... Um, oh, the Dakar's got the front out. Went to Alaska on that about two months ago. It's fantastic. And need to get the uh, front sorted out for that. Forks, seals and stuff like that. A few odds and ends. Um, but I'll get that back on the road. And then I've actually been riding the power valve as well. We're riding the power valve around, and you'll see in the background there the gamma. Uh, I haven't been riding the gamma. I need to ride the gamma. Gamma actually is way quicker than the RC30. It's a load lighter and it's a load twitchier and it's really good. And here's my wife. So I'll take a picture of the Volvo, which is also a good car. Middle age, that is. There's middle age right there. That's a Volvo. All right, see you later.